What would it mean to you, a silver and gold investor, if we have actually reached peak gold, peak silver, meaning that from now and until the future, the amount of gold and silver produced by mining activities would actually be declining? What do you think that would do for the price of silver and gold. We're going to dig in, pardon the pun, into that subject in this video and look at some interesting developments. I'm going to tell you what I've heard from industry insiders. Yeah, I talk to CEOs, I talk to senior managers at a lot of these big mining companies, and what I'm hearing is downright fascinating. Well, it is to us because we're basement dwellers. We love precious metals. We love silver and gold, and nothing is going to impact the price of anything like supply and demand, and we've got some big news to look at in that area. Remember, silver and gold are a safe harbor asset, a flight to safety asset, and one that is growing in importance by the day and by the week. We have fewer and fewer people wanting to move to the dollar or to treasury bonds as a safe harbor asset. The allure of silver and gold continues to increase. Is the world running out of silver and gold? How do you feel about that? Well, think about this. What determines the price of silver and gold? Besides those crooks at the COMEX <laughs> who've been manipulating it for years and years, but they can only do that for so long. Guys, at the end of the day, there's going to be one thing that determines the price, the value of silver and gold, and that is supply and demand. Are we at peak supply? Will, as we move into the future, we see ever-decreasing amounts of silver and gold being mined out of the ground. I think that it's a much more realistic possibility than most of us are realizing. And I think the statistics that we are able to glean on this subject indicate to us that if we're not already there, we are already very close to a point where there's not going to be as much silver and gold coming out of the ground. And don't forget, okay, don't forget, silver and gold are finite resources. They are finite. They are not infinite. You can't plant seeds in the ground and grow more gold and silver. You can't photocopy it. You can't digitally, digitally reproduce it. You can't. There's only so much silver and gold on this planet. Okay. Think about demand for silver. You know it. Solar, electronic, uh, <laughs> investor demand, right? What about, what about times of economic uncertainty? What about times of geopolitical uncertainty? Think about gold. What about the central banks that are like sucking up in the eastern countries? You know the demand story, but what about the supply story? Are we indeed? Let's focus on a couple things. Uh, I got a lot. We got a lot to cover on this subject. Let me let me let me read this to you first, and then I'm going to tell you some information about the supply of silver and gold, right, that I, I believe to be some very keen insights into what we have to expect even within just the next 10 years. It's going to get very, very interesting. In, in July of 2012, Natural Resource, Resource Holdings uh, CEO Ray Sabag wrote a report entitled 2012 World Gold Deposits Ranking, claiming that gold production would peak between 2022 and 2025 due to markedly lower grades. That's key. These mines, when they're mining now, there's not as much silver. There's not as much gold in the ore that they dig up. All the easy stuff, all the low-hanging fruit has been harvested. All the stuff that was laying in streams out in California, all the stuff that was right near the surface with a lot of gold in it, guys, it's all gone. It's all gone, okay? And remote locations, that's another big challenge facing the mining companies. A lot of the new, when they do find the new deposit, 
They're off out in the middle of nowhere. You got to helicopter everything in, or you got to float it in on barges, or you got to bring it in on airplanes under these remote airstrips. There aren't roads leading to many of these mine locations where they are finding what little silver and gold are left in the crust of the earth. And don't forget, there's not an infinite supply. You can't grow silver and gold. I wish you could, right? Get a little pack of seeds, put it in the garden. Yeah, grow yourself some gold. No, it doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. It's a finite resource of the remaining known undeveloped deposits. Quote, quote, consequently, the guaranteed depletion depletion, that's a key word, in the existing production mix, coupled with a more realistic introduction of new mines into the mix, uh, makes it clear that barring multiple high-grade, multi-million ounce discoveries each year, which have not happened, they aren't finding new gold, right? A significant increase in gold production is unlikely. And you, the same thing is true for silver. Okay, guys, the same thing is true for silver. There's charts out there. Here's the reality. I talked to the CEOs, Alistair Still, the CEO of Gold Mining Inc. I talked to Dan Wilton, the CEO of First Mining Gold. I talked to uh, Sean uh, Kuhn Kuhn, the CEO of Dolly Varden Silver, John Lee, the CEO of Silver Elephant, all these guys in the last month. Guys, Here's the reality. It's next to impossible to find new silver and gold. Fact. Okay? Fact. If you're a company that already has it, you're sitting in good shape. Okay? But it's ex super expensive. And the places you have to go to try to find it. And with sentiment, the way it is right now, we are sitting in the catbird seat, I tell you. You are a catbird. Whatever a cat, what is a catbird seat? Anyway, you're sitting in a favorable position if you own some silver or gold right now. Because finding the new metal is very difficult. These companies, like First Mining Gold, who's a sponsor of my channel, they have, what, two, five million ounce deposits in Canada and another three million. They have 13 million ounces of gold in the ground. I think those companies like Gold Mining Inc., they have 23 million ounces of gold in the ground. Dolly Varden Silver has, what, I think 100 million ounces of silver. Suma Silver, they have this massive... Uh, a deposit out in Nevada of silver. I think that's the place to be. Think about this. Would you rather be a big producing gold mining company right now? You're doing nothing but burning. That's what these, these companies, the big gold mining companies have been through such a tough, very difficult 10 years. What does that have to do with the price of your stack? Right? I know you're thinking about yourself. We all do. That's okay. What does that have to do with the value of your stack of silver and gold, it's got everything to do with it. Because in the end, supply and demand, Mother Nature, the market forces, will determine the value of the metals. If you want to get a little bit for yourself right now, let's go check out our friends Pinbex, another official sponsor of Ron's Basement, Pinbex, okay? Online bullion dealer, silver, gold, platinum, if you want a one-stop shop, in my opinion, I think it's one of the best places available. Best prices, best service, and I trust them. Do your own due diligence, but I think you will discover, like I did, Pimbex is best. P-I-M-B-E-X. Now, when I talk to these CEOs, they all tell me the same thing. It's darn near impossible to find any new metal. So are we at peak silver and gold? Very likely we are, or maybe we're already past the peak, or maybe we're right at the peak. Market reality right now is less and less of the metal coming on to the scene. So would you rather be right now? Think about this. Gold miners supply the new gold to the market. The silver miners supply the new silver to the market. Now, most silver comes as a byproduct of copper mining, zinc mining, and lead mining. You need to know that, like 80% of it. But, but we think about these companies over the last 10 years, it has been extremely difficult 
right? Because of price of the metal for those companies to operate. So they are, they, they've been grabbing all the easiest silver, all the easiest gold they could get out of their mines just to survive, just so they could break even or pay off big debts that they have. Maybe being forced to pay out dividends, pay off debt. But what they haven't been doing is investing. They did all those other things, right? Paid dividends, paid off debt at the expense of their pipeline. Gold and silver are finite resources. Gold and silver mining are depletion businesses, meaning every time they dig up an ounce of silver or gold out of the ground, that's one less that they have that they can dig up in the future. So they have to constantly feed their pipeline and they haven't been able to do that. It's set up a, a situation where I think, number one, if you're a stacker uh, and you have some physical silver, physical gold, platinum for that matter as well, you're sitting in very good shape. If you're a company that has been investing in uh, in buying because everything's been cheap up these massive deposits of 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 known and measured gold and silver in the ground and buying them on the cheap right you could buy silver projects for like a dollar an ounce because the market is so screwed up right would you rather be a company that's like burning through all your inventory and hardly making any money or would you rather be a company like company like First Mining Gold that's got all this gold in the ground, uh, Gold Mining Inc., Dolly Varden Silver, Summa Silver, that, that have all these uh, millions of ounces of silver and gold in the ground, the best vault in the world. You know, I like to say, the only thing, I, mean, I love to hold it in my hands, but the next best, best thing to holding some silver or gold in your hand would be to know that you own part of a company that holds a boatload of it in the world's safest vault, right? Uh, 300 meters down, buried in the earth. Nobody's going to come steal it from you. It's a very interesting situation. First mining gold. FFMGF is the stock symbol. If you want to get more information about them, don't forget. 13 million ounces of gold in the ground in Canada. You can talk to a real live human at First Mining Gold, and he's a heck of a great guy, Paul Morris. His email address is in the description of this and every video that I put out. Learn more about the company, right? See if it's something that's of interest to you. Now, as we look at peak gold and peak silver, we know this from the Silver Institute. 2021, 827 million ounces of silver were produced. 2022, 822 million. Easy to remember. Right? Down, and not down significantly, but down by 5 million ounces. But think about that in the context of how the deficit is growing. The deficit meaning there was way more silver demanded in 2022 than in 2021. Estimates for the future are mind-boggling for silver alone. You know the solar demand numbers, they are mind tingling. <laughs> the, the amount of silver that's going to be needed to electrify the planet to develop the, the solar industry is absolutely crazy. And don't forget, nobody's is exploring for silver. So in the past 10 years, the big companies have paid off dividends, paid off debt, just did what they could to survive, but they aren't exploring for silver and gold at the expense of their supply. And the supply from the mines that the mine, that's the supply for silver and gold. Two key words for you, depletion. Every time somebody digs up an ounce of silver or gold out of the ground, that's one less available to dig up. Number two, finite. If mother earth is creating more gold or silver, I don't know. It's happening in a very slow process. It took billions of years for the metal that's on this planet. If you're a CEO of a big mining company, okay, and, and you're now you're looking out three, four years in the future, you're in big trouble. You're in big trouble because your pipeline is empty. You've already grabbed all the low-hanging fruit. Right? You forgot to put gas in the gas tank. There's another way to think about it. You're getting near, you know, you got a little under a quarter tank of gas right now. What are you going to do? 
Are they going to explore for gold on their own? Number one, that's expensive. It's extremely expensive to explore, to drill for gold or silver for that matter. Number two, it's risky. There's no guarantee. You could spend all that money right up in the Golden Triangle in, in British Columbia, or you could go to South America, or you could go to West Africa. It's risky. You don't know. You could spend all that money not know that you're going to find anything. Number three, it's time consuming. It takes years and years and years to, to do all that drilling and to find what gold that you're hoping to find. So think about it. You're going to, what, what, if you're running a big mining, this is why they aren't going to go out looking, which again will put constraint on the supply of silver and gold. And in the end, we're in a business with a limited supply. Silver and gold, congratulations, my fellow basement dwellers. There's only so much out there. Bro, one thing. Know that you're always welcome in the basement. You can watch another recorded live stream if you like. I put out videos from time to time. Go check out the giveaway video. Again, there's a link to it in the description of this, and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you.